You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. The Manitoba Chamber Orchestra resumes their 2023-24 season on Wednesday, welcoming soprano Lara Secord Hayde to perform alongside them at the Crescent Arts Centre. Praised by the New York Times and Opera Today, the New England Conservatory and Juilliard grad returns home to Winnipeg to showcase her vocal prowess and talent. First, Lara has joined me in the Classic 107 studio. Welcome here. Thank you. Uh, I guess I should say welcome back. We've had you in studio a number of times over the years, though this my first opportunity to chat with you, so so yeah. appreciate you being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I was looking back on the Classic 107 website and looking at the last time you were here, mm-hmm. and it was ahead of the Sopranos of Winnipeg show back in, in 2020. What a production oh. that was. Just so stupendous. It was a production in place of Carmen, which is finally happening. Finally. You finally get to let Frasquita loose That's right. <laughs> here, here in Winnipeg. Yeah. But before all of that, you get to make a Manitoba Chamber Orchestra debut. Correct. How you feeling? So excited. Tell us more. Well, this project is very uh, beloved and personal to me. Uh, it was a pandemic project uh, that I collaborated with Sid Rabinovich and Tad Bernacki on. Um coming out of a desire. I'd been looking for 10 years for Hebrew art song to perform. So not folk song, not popular song, because there's plenty of that, but classical art song. Uh, and so during the pandemic, I I spoke to Sid and I said, can can you write me something? Would, hmm. Is that possible? Uh, and I sent him some poets that I really enjoy. Uh, but ultimately, we, la- we landed on Shir Hashirim's The Song of Songs, which uh, we both are quite drawn to and has been set many, many times, but actually largely in English, I think. Um, and so that's how it got started. And now it's two amazing song cycles, one based on Shir Hashirim in Hebrew and one based on folk poetry in Ladino. Hmm. So it has more of a Spanish flavor. I definitely want to talk more about all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to get to it in, in just a little bit. Um, but I, I'm curious, just kind of returning to, to Winnipeg, because uh-huh. um, you made your Manitoba opera debut back in 2014, I think it was, singing Marcellina with, with Fidelio. That, that feels right. right. 2014? Yeah, I, I think, think that feels right. right. Yeah. You performed with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra before. And, yeah. and, and now the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, your debut, you get to sing with the the big three. Uh, what's that opportunity like as a local singer returning back to sing with the, the big three institutions here in the city? It's, I mean, it's incredible. I'm so grateful. Uh, and I mean, th- this project was a couple years in the coming, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make it any less like uh, thrilling. Um, and I have to say, I'm just so grateful I've had the chance to sing these songs several times. So this isn't my first uh, go with them. You know, I've been singing these songs in recital now for a couple of years. Uh, so I was looking at your 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 Facebook page and, and speaking of recitals, um, you're now based in Berlin. I think we last spoke. You just settled in Vancouver from Toronto. Now you're in Berlin. What what took you what took you there, uh, Laura? I have to ask. <laughs> to Berlin? Yeah. Uh, well, I'd been thinking about it for a long time. I always wanted to spend some time in Europe. Um, where this art form is very, very alive, you know. Um, but I always wanted to go over with a job, you know. I always thought, okay, well, I'll audition for jobs, and when I get one, I'll go. And yeah. it didn't work out that way, uh, but I had to I had to make the decision to go anyway. Um, and so part of the appeal of Berlin, not the only appeal, because as we've spoken about, Berlin is incredible, mm-hmm. uh, but they're really supportive of artists and they offer freelance artist visas that you can go and get your feet on the ground hmm. um, sort of on spec. Uh, I was there last summer. We were chatting off air and I, it was just one of those cities where I, I, I spent a little bit of time there. I was there for four days and it was one of those cities you left just thinking like, when can I come back? When yeah. can I spend time here? What's your experience been like there over the last year or so? Uh, well, I was nervous making the move, right? So I, I said, okay, give it a go for six months. Yeah. You know, I needed to give myself an exit strategy. But in a week, I was like, oh, no, no, no I'm staying. I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't blame you in the least. And, and what a wonderful opportunity uh, that is for you. I mean, it, it's not every day that you can walk down the street and see, I don't know, the Berlin Phil or like uh, the, the German Opera. I mean, like there's there's so many things that you can participate in. And I mean, it's just a vibrant arts community. And, and what an inspiring opportunity for you as an artist. And I... I 
I'm curious about this because I, I think as listeners likely would have gathered, um, you do a lot of opera singing, whether it's, you know, Baroque stuff, classical stuff, the romantic tradition, or something more contemporary. B but it's not the only music that you perform. And, and we sort of started this conversation off talking a little bit about this project. And I want to get a little bit more into it now because I I'm curious about um, the importance of, of Sephardic music for you and the significance of, of, of singing this in uh, as an artist for, for you personally. Can you talk more about that? I I can. I, it's it's such a broad topic in my life, and so it's hard to to narrow it down to speak intelligently about it. But um, I started singing. I mean, I went to Jewish day school here in town. I went to what are we calling it now? The Great Academy. Yeah, Great Academy. Jewish. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's had many names. Yeah. Um. Uh. So I I started singing. Um. Uh. With songs and chanting and prayers and and. All of that. Um, uh, I sang with the high folk ensemble mm -hmm. for a time, uh, and my bat mitzvah is. I always feel so like, oh my goodness, <laughs> embarrassed about this story. But my bat mitzvah is kind of where I always kind of knew I had a voice. I, it, but it's kind of where other people noticed it, and so that meant a lot mm. uh, to be recognized in that way. And um, so. There's this interesting thing I'm learning more about through experience, which is that different languages seem to bring out different colors in oh. your voice, yeah, different yeah. Uh, connections to your memories, to your experience, to your body. And uh, singing in Hebrew, I've always kind of noticed, brought out a very particular timbre and, and a sort of gentleness in my singing. Hmm. because, And I think it's because... Uh, because of the nature, the the sort of any personal nature of chant and and prayer, and that's the language that I learned to do that in. You, you, you talked about finding Hebrew art song, and specifically art song, not folk song, yeah. not pop song. Right. Um, do, do you enjoy that aspect of like musical sleuthing, like finding those tunes? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, absolutely. What, what is it about that that's so engaging for you as a as a creator? Um, just the I'm just that knowing in the world how many wonderful composers there are that don't get the kind of acclaim of the the big ones whose names are really on our radar. Mm -hmm. Just knowing me, you know, and 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 even as a kid growing up, you listen to a record and there's one song on there that just really pulls at you, yeah, yeah. right? And so knowing there may be a composer out there who I haven't heard of yet, who maybe not their whole body of work is something that deeply resonates with me, but there may be one song that musically, poetically, and in the convergence of the two is really special. And finding that is like finding a diamond, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of, of composers who no doubt resonate with you, mm -hmm. um, Sidra Bimnich, you were reaching out to him, a pandemic project, and this has kind of become something else entirely. Um, you've You've performed his music before you you've shared it with audiences in berlin too i think right is that have you performed a little uh, bit of oh music yeah there? that's right i yeah. uh, i performed this recital that i put together which is sort of a journey through hebrew ladino yiddish and galego um and uh and so it's i mean i worry sometimes that it's challenging for the audience because when you go to a recital you want to hear something a little familiar you know mm. you're you're willing to to hear a few new things but but you want to hear a few things that you know already just as anchor points and this is a recital of most audiences will know none of it yeah, yeah, yeah. you know but i think it's accessible and beautiful enough and there's enough uh inner repetition that the ear can can get comfortable so i performed this recital uh, of of music that's mostly new to audiences. Um, I did it here in Winnipeg with the Tarboot Festival two years ago, mm -hmm. and then I performed it again in Berlin last month. Now, speaking of new things, um, this uh, a newly orchestrated version of two previous Sid Rabinovich works done by Tabernacki. Can we talk more about these pieces that you'll be singing? And I, I'm very curious about the, the Ladino works that you'll be yeah. singing. Can, can you tell us about Ladino culture, the, the language, and, and, and how this works? I mean, I'm, I'm not super familiar myself. Sure, sure. Um, well, Ladino is the language that was spoke. I don't, I don't think it's it's used much anymore, much like Yiddish. But it was spoken by Spanish Jewish populations, and um, 
when I've seen it written out, it looks like Hebrew, mm-hmm. but uh, it's really an amalgam of Hebrew and Ladino. And the uh, I imagine that there are um, regional differences in in dialect as well. These poems um, feel quite Spanish, uh, but there are certainly Turkish influences as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're so interesting. It was it was such a challenge coming to them for the first time uh, because they're very um, sad and bitter, but also humorous and <laughs> um, uh, full of uh, jokes and ironies. Uh, and it it was a little hard to square the circle at first, and then the when I came to them a second time, I thought, oh no, no, no I get it, I get it. And that's going to be on display um, when you perform. How, how are we saying it? Canciones Sefa. How are we to pronounce Sefarad. it? Sefarad. Sefarad. Yeah. Okay, I was curious about that one. Um, again, originally music that was set for medium voice and guitar. Now we uh-huh. get to hear an orchestrated version that's done right. by Ted Bernacki. Um, much like uh, the other work on the program, the setting of the Song of Songs that you'll be um, singing in, in Hebrew, right? Mm-hmm. That also will work set for uh, mezzo clarinet and guitar, I think it was Correct. originally. Yep. Um, what's it like to perform these orchestrations? Have, have you had the chance to hear them yet? No, you're shaking your head. This <laughs> no, is so exciting. We're I'm getting so, you ahead of rehearsal. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I've heard the MIDI tracks, but as you know, that tells yeah, you nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, I've uh, spent a little time with Sid going over, okay, this will be a little different than what you're used to hearing. Mm-hmm. And and uh, this might be, uh, this is a moment to watch Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just flagging the things that will be a little different. Yeah. Well, um, again, a very exciting opportunity. A wonderful way to kick off the second part of the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra season. Uh, that's coming up on Wednesday, March 20th. Um, this the first of several performances that you'll be doing in town. As I mentioned, uh, performing with Manitoba Opera, finally, for Skeeta and Carmen. Uh, and then <laughs> after that, a recital with Little Opera Company. Mm-hmm. Uh, plenty of opportunity to hear you singing in the city, Lara. And it all begins next week. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me.